MSI is not about to let 2018 going without a bang. It is trying to further contribute into the gaming uh, market with the release of its brand new lineup, the MPG. And today we are reviewing the very first generation of its budget and entry level of that lineup, the MPG V390 Gaming Plus. MPG stands for MSI Performance Gaming and what MSI tries to do here is to propose a gaming centric motherboard packed with feature and performant enough to operate the most demanding processors and keep a budget at the bottom bottom floor of the market and for example the msi uh, mpg z3 uh, msi mpg z390 gaming plus will cost you about 160 dollars before taxes which is the cheapest MSI gaming board, well, gaming ATX board uh, that it has to propose and probably one of the cheapest overall on the gaming market. That is a risky bet, but did MSI deliver on this? In a nutshell, absolutely. Uh, I've been, I wouldn't say blown away, but definitely impressed about how much you know, uh, features MSI has packed in this little ATX board, the quality of build, which really shows some kind of maturity in its day-to-day -day manufacturing and even some real innovation, which is usually rare to find at that price level. But without any further ado, let's jump right in. All right, so let's jump right into the obvious. The MPG Z390 Gaming Plus is an ATX motherboard, meaning 30.5 cm long for 24.4 cm wide. Let's note that there is a notch that's been uh, cut out of the board, allowing an easier access to our SATA and USB 3.1 first generation front panel plug. It is powered by the usual LGA1151 CPU socket, which is compatible to the 8th and 9th generation of iCore Intel processor. VRM wise, we have an 8 plus 1 phase, which is plenty to power any kind of processor you'll throw at it, even 8 core processors, namely the i9 9900K. I usually prefer 8 phases ports, and that's because the more phases you have, the less heat is concentrated on each one of them, so it's better overall for the cooling and uh, performance of your board. But here, what MSI did is absolutely genius pure and distilled genius. Um, the IO housing is actually part of the heat sink, meaning an infinitely better heat dissipation. I have uh, reviewed a bunch of motherboard. I think this is the first time I see that kind of feature. Um, I will try to see if uh, indeed this is the very first time, but if it is, this is absolutely amazing. I love this. I bet we're gonna see much, much uh, more of this kind of feature on MSI motherboard, obviously in the uh, next generation, but I'm quite certain that other brands and manufacturer will try to reproduce uh, the IO slash heatsink model. Um, so yeah, kudos, double kudos, triple kudos to MSI for this. Memory-wise, we have the usual dual channel, which can support up to 64 gigabyte of DDR4 RAM, overclockable up to 4.4 gigahertz. Again, that is more uh, than we usually see at that price level. Uh, you have to go all the way to um, the Strix, or Maximus Hero 11 in uh, Asus to find 4.4 gigahertz uh, overclockable RAM, anything under is 4.266. Um, and if you look at the tough uh, Z390, which is the closest competitor to this very board, uh, it'll overclock only up to 4.266 megahertz. So again, kudos to MSI uh, for pulling that off. Storage-wise, our board can support a dual M.2 solid-state drive configuration, one up to 8 cm long and another up to 11 cm long. And since the V390 chipset is obtained ready, our M.2 solid-state drives can swap data up to 32 gigabit per second in theory. And I say in theory because usually when you have such speeds, you have overheating coming from your M.2 solid-state drive. And that's where I'm a little bit sad uh, because MSI should have equipped those M.2 solid state drives with heat sinks and they did not and that's not going to help for heat dissipation. Second thing I want to note is the fact that they are way too close uh, 
uh, to the PCIe Expresses, especially the 11 centimeter, which will be trapped right under uh, the video card. So that's not gonna help at all with thermal throttling. PCIe-wise, we have six third generation slots right here, four single speed single slots and two 16 slots with different speeds. Only the closest one to the CPU, in our case the red one, can operate up to 16 full bus speeds. So if you have only one video card, this is where you want it to be for optimal uh, performances. Note that it has also been metallically reinforced since it is the one most likely to carry the heavy weight of our video card. The second 16 PCIe slot has been capped up to four full bus speed no matter what. Also, it has no metallically reinforcement, which is quite normal since this board is not SLI compatible. So you will not be able to operate to NVIDIA video card. And so as I've seen on the Tough Z390, that would be all good and all fine. Having uh, capped 16 PCIe Expresses uh, and not metallically reinforcing it if it was not meant to carry a second video card. But where I'm again surprised is to see that this board is crossfire compatible, meaning that if you have two AMD video cards, two Radeon cards, will work, uh, but poorly. And I really do not uh, suggest that you do so, because one, your second PCIe Express is capped up to four, four, four full bus speed, and it is not metallically reinforced, which potentially could be dangerous and harmful to your motherboard, or motherboard altogether. So yeah, that's a no-go. And no matter what the brand and the maker of your video card, only one should be operated on this motherboard. Uh, SATA-wise, we have six third-generation SATA plugs, which can all transfer up to six gigabit per second. Uh, another kudos for MSI here, they have uh, spaced the SATA plugs for an easier and more comfortable plugging reach. IO-wise, and starting from the left, we have a mouse keyboard PS2 connector, two second-generation USB plugs, which can all transfer up to 480 megabit per second, an HDMI and DVI video output for our integrated graphics, four 3.1 second-generation USB, which can all transfer up to 10 gigabit per second, including a Type-C. Our surge protected 1 gigabit LAN. And finally, our gold-plated 6-way 8-channel audio inputs. Front panel connector-wise, we have two USB second generation plugs right here. I like the fact that they wrote USB right between the pins, which makes it so easy easy uh, for me to identify exactly where I want to put them and so kudos to MSI for this. Two 3.1 first generation USB front panel plugs right here which can both transfer up to 5 gigabit per second and no front panel USB 3.1 second generation type C and I'm always pointing this out specifically in the Z390 chipset motherboard because they have no excuses. Uh, manufacturers have no excuses not to put as many as they can because six of them have been nested inside the chipset. So not so kudos to MSI for this. Okay, so we've seen the general aspect of our motherboard and already it's pretty good. It's really, really good. Uh, but here comes my favorite part of the review, the enthusiast slash aesthetic part of it. And in our case, we have seven PWM fan connectors, one of which can support a water pump. So in principle, we can run a custom water cooling uh, solution on this motherboard, but just up to a single water loop. And I, I didn't expect much, much more at this price point. Aesthetical wise, we have two only red LED strips, which are nested on our motherboard. One right here on the edge and the second one kind of awkwardly placed right on the back of our motherboard and I'm not sure it looks great. I've tried uh, to capture uh, the red essence uh, behind the Gaming Plus logo, but frankly it was dim, not very strong, and I think that MSI can do much better than that. But no panic, if you really want to go on the RGB train craze, uh, then you have at least two Mystic compatible RGB connectors right here. But of course, no RGB addressable connector on this board, which is not that surprising at this price point again. But there is one last little thing I want to talk about is this little connector right here. Uh, this will be able to support an Intel CNVI module, uh, giving Wi-Fi ability and capability to our motherboard all the way up to what the chipset can natively support, which is an 802.11 AC. 
uh, standard, giving us up to 1.73 gigabit per second of data transfer. And that is really kudos to MSI. I love the fact that uh, we can do some later on kind of secondhand upgrade. I, I absolutely love this. So in conclusion, I'm gonna put the board here. Um, in conclusion, our very first entry level motherboard for the brand new lineup of MSI gaming friendly motherboard, the MPG, MPEG, right? Um, is a winner. This board will retail at about $160 before taxes, which is $10 cheaper than its nearest competition. And um, I think there, there are a couple of critics. The fact that we don't have heat sinks on the M.2 solid state drive, let me say this right away. And the fact that, um, yeah, I, I would have liked to have a metallically reinforced second 16 PCIe lanes with more lanes than four. Uh, but other than that, this is a really complete motherboard, which at this price point brings much more uh, than expected to. And the fact that you have this extended heat shield, I think this is really innovation. Usually, I'm sorry to say, Asus is the one who drives the market, drives the innovation train uh, on this kind of market, but MSI really played it very nicely. I, I, I think that this is something all manufacturers should be adopting right away. And, and uh, yeah, so very, very double, triple, quadruple kudos to MSI. And I think this is a main factor of why I'm so in love with this uh, motherboard. Um, other than that, you have the usual things that you're gonna see at about $160 to $200 price range. I'm not a fan of the RGB, sorry, of the red LED, but those are details and no uh, deal breaker. So for my money at $160, if that's your budget, this is exactly where you wanna be for a first time builder or for even somewhat of a good performance gaming experience. There is nothing else on the market which will deliver that many features for that little money. And it's red, so kind of Christmassy. All right.